Last week, I shared with my students that I never want to win the lottery. Earning my salary by giving them new insights gives me a certain satisfaction. I may have found another way which gives me even a feeling which goes beyond that satisfaction. And maybe that will work for you as well. Five years ago, I was invited to a conference by Microsoft about education and technology. Usually those conferences take three days, they have multiple speakers, and they tend to be pretty bad for your diet. But one of those sessions was atypical and had a very strange name, which was Kakuma. During that session, we had a Skype call with Moses, who is a consultant at the Kakuma refugee camp. The Kakuma refugee camp is based in Kenya, houses 200,000 refugees who fled from war and hunger in Sudan, Somalia, Burundi, to name a few. 55% of all refugees are children. This year only 5,000 young people arrived in a camp with no relatives at all. In 2015, the camp had 50 different schools with classrooms typically housing up to 200 refugees with no access to textbooks nor any other educational resources. Only one in three teachers is certified to teach. And while many people are born in the camp, most people will be living in the camp for the rest of their lives. Some people, those who are really highly educated, they may have the best shot to be sent to another continent to live a new life, and for them, it's like winning the lottery. Now, being a teacher myself for 15 years, during that session, I promised Moses to help him to increase the level of education in the camp by teaching the refugees through Skype. Back home, I started to read about the camp and I started to realize I was quite naive because the Kakuma schools don't have Skype computers, not even electricity. But I made a certain promise and I decided to make it happen. And so I shipped my own laptop to the camp and a local NGO was kind enough to share their internet connection. I started to teach the refugees in my own kitchen, science, English, math, and I really loved it. But one teacher, one single teacher trying to reach thousands of refugees, that really doesn't make any sense. So I invited other people through social media to join the project. And many people responded positively. We had our first community after a few months with more than 100 teachers across 45 different countries, willing to do more than teaching their own students. Then the laptop disappeared. And mysteriously enough, the local NGO lost interest to share internet as well. I had a very d important decision to make. And leaving it like that or starting all over again from scratch. At that time, Belgian architects picked up the story in a newspaper. They reached out to me and together we decided to build a school, our own school, in the Kakuma camp. After chasing some funding, we were able to equip that school with solar panels. We had laptops, even two refugees dedicated to the project. This was last year. We now had our own learning hub and we were able to scale up to reach more people, more teachers and students. United Nations became an official partner. The World Economic Forum called it one of the top schools in the world pioneering the future of education. A Hollywood crew even came over to cover the project by creating a Netflix documentary. Now, many people love this story because we are offering a free education to some of the poorest people on earth. But there was an unexpected side effect. Turned out we were doing more than teaching refugees. Allow me to explain through this model. At the left side, we have the Kakuma students. 
At the other side, we have students from every corner of the world. Let's call them the global students. And the idea was offering knowledge through a virtual interaction. But Kakuma students turned out to give something back, which was potentially even more valuable. They talk about their dreadful lives and still they smile from ear to ear. They share their passion for football and don't complain while mentioning that they only have food once a day. They share an authentic view into their lives. And through those intercultural exchanges, we noticed that the mindset of the global students began to change. Because during those calls, they began to appreciate each other. And this became our unique way to fight a global threat called polarization. Turned out that this blue arrow was the cherry on the top. Now, I have a question for you. What if this model can be replicated, can be used to scale up to tackle other global issues? An issue I personally feel is affecting all of us. Something what's urgent. Everybody's speaking about it, especially young people. Climate change. I decided to launch a new project, this time with groups of students in every continent. We asked them to focus on the causes and effects of climate change. We asked them to create small videos with their findings to be uploaded to the website by their teachers. This way, students were able to learn from each other in very authentic ways. In Australia, students reported that their country is suffering from bushfires. In Ireland, the students mentioned that their schools were closed for the very first time in history due to hurricanes. In Sierra Leone, a teacher's house was partly destroyed due to mud flows. We also asked those students to have live virtual interactions to share their concerns, those findings. And we had our first arrow, knowledge. But we soon discovered that the students were willing to do more. American students, they developed a solar suitcase, which has a battery and solar panels. They shipped it to the Kakuma refugee camp, where now one school has free electricity. Irish students, they focused on the waste management symbols. They noticed that they were inconsistent. They invited their minister for climate change to come to their school and requested a new symbol. This way, they brought national change and even later received a letter from their president congratulating on what they did. Portuguese students created a waste machine, something what recycles plastic waste. They shipped this machine to Mozambique, where now people are able to recycle nine tons of plastic waste and turn it into new objects, barrels and cutlery, bricks, tiles, providing four people of a salary. And this teacher from Malawi, his name is Andrews, I know him personally. I met him at a conference in Dubai though, and we started to chat and he told me like, my students planted trees to save a lake in Malawi. Now, the thing with those conferences is that you get to speak with people from the UK, from Ireland, India, Africa, and they all have different accents. So when I asked him, like, how many trees did they plant? I thought he was saying 60,000 trees. I was already impressed, you know, but turned out that he was saying 60 million trees. How about that? Isn't that extraordinary? We have hundreds of those kinds of stories. We noticed that the students went beyond learning about climate change. They didn't go on a street, start yelling. No, they came with solutions. They enjoyed going the extra mile by finding meaningful ways to take action for a green planet. 
After watching their videos with their findings, we noticed that their behavior started to change, their mindset. Again, we had our blue arrow. The project started to grow, became more structured. Those teachers who have been there from the very beginning, they were, were called ambassadors. They were the ones who helped the project to grow. They reached out to press and presidents. Last year, we had two and a half million participants. Our community reached out to ministries of education in 15 different countries. We co-authored a book with WWF, translated this and made it available in 15 different languages in one single week. Rick Davis from NASA, he reached out to me and offered to send our students messages of hope to Mars. The project was endorsed by Jane Goodall, Queen Elizabeth and Dalai Lama. But the true heroes are the students. They prove that they have the capacity to do more than learning about climate change. They have the potential to come up with solutions and take action. Now, great story, but why would you care, right? What if, what if this model would work for you in your personal life? Let me share an example from my life. Last month, my son Mauro came to me and he was like, Dad, what you're doing? And then I told him, like, I'm reading a book about plastic and did you know that 80% of all tap water on a global scale has small, tiny, little plastic fibers, microplastics. He was instantly interested. He took his own laptop and started to read about it. Now he is nine and at his school, they have to do three presentations this year. And he did one on plastics and how to create your own bioplastic with milk and vinegar. Now, because of him, not me, his friend's mindset and behavior may have started to change. This model can be applied to your life too, even in a broader context, in your own environment and not necessarily with young people. You can be one of those dots too. To do so, you start interacting with people like friends, family, neighbors, even CEOs or government leaders. You can be the change too. Let's take a closer look at some common things which may happen in your life. Maybe you've been watching a Netflix series about poverty lately. Or maybe you read an article about deforestation in Brazil. Or maybe you've been really, really irritated about spotting fake news on social media. It doesn't have to end there. Let's take a closer look at how a mutual exchange of mindset and knowledge can lead to a greater whole. Maybe you can try to find out how to support a local food bank. Or maybe you can reach out to your boss and ultimately decide to start a tree planting with the whole office. Or you can explain to your niece and your nephew the importance of critical thinking and how fake news can be a threat to democracy. So that they feel sensitized to check their resources at all times and are not inclined to share polarizing messages on social media in the future. You can be the first brick of a series of falling dominoes which ultimately can lead to people taking action for a better planet, for a good cause. This model clearly leads to a win-win. Good for you, good for the planet. All you have to do is open up your mindset 
to those people and those issues. Do you believe you have the potential to inspire other people? It will be the start of your fully rewarding journey. Ladies and gentlemen, it will be your winning lottery ticket. Thank you.